Brian. Hey, Brian. It's Todd Ford. Oh, perfect, Todd. How are you? Doing pretty good. Good to hear it. Thanks for getting back to me. I was just going through your record here. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, congratulations on getting approved. I'm just really surprised it happened in one take and in, in, in such a short period. Well, actually, Maybe it's I, because of my age and... and uh, oh, I've seen people that, at that your age. Thing. You started at 58, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I, I do have a question for you, you know, considering that you got approved like quick like this, there's a lot of people out there that are like, you know, your initial application, it's de it's going to get done. It's the done deal. It's a given. I was wondering, I mean, our lines are recorded here. If there's any tips that you have that you could be willing to share, like an audio snippet that I could put out to others and maybe give, give them some optimism that, Hey, I would just say to, to respond as quickly as you can mm -hmm. to their and as as detailed as you can to their requests. Quickly. Okay. Quickly. Don't let it sit. Don't ignore it. Just yep. return the information as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. Of course, when they start sending these these um, appointment dates, they're going to screw with you there too. You mean, uh, gonna schedule the, you mean the, the, the medical exam, mental or physical? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mental, physical, all of that. They, mm -hmm. they screw with you there because they'll send you a notice setting a date, and you have to return it within a couple of days. Sometimes I've gotten these notices after they wanted it returned. Interesting. After the return date. And then a week or two later, and these are always scheduled out a month or so out, a week before the appointment is due, they send you a letter saying, "Oh, that's been canceled. It's been rescheduled to this date." Then you got to respond to that. That's when I was jumping on their shit because they would call me and want to give me the excuse, and I'm like, "Look, you people are just fucking with people. That's all you're right. doing." Right. Right. This is just a damn head game. <laughs> that's interesting so, that they're adjusting the date and perhaps testing some type of uh, competency. Because here's the thing. Todd, if you miss an independent medical exam, it, right. it can definitely influence the case. Oh, absolutely. And it says that in the letters. Yeah, yeah. So, I, And I, on I top of that, when you call to address this, yep. good luck getting through to somebody I know. or having them return a call. I know. It's yeah. just, it's all set up to discourage you as much as you possibly can. Right, right. Yeah, so, I just... But yeah, they they not only would would change the date of the appointment, but change the doctor mm -hmm. to somebody mm -hmm. different. Yeah, that's a I good mean, tip. Um, that's a good tip. Thanks for sharing that. Is there any others that you'd be willing to shout out to our folks out there? Well, try, try to be as patient as you can. I mean, it's it's uh, you know when we started this, they they you know they. they I guess the average time you quoted me was was uh, two and a half years for right. the first, whether it's an approval or a disapproval. Well, if you went to a hearing, uh, that's right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, I I don't know how often what happened to me happens as Six, far as it being sixty-two percent of the time for us that uh, people get approved without going to a hearing. Now, um, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's over the but, last you know, three years. That, just, you know, just, just be as patient as you can. Uh, luckily, I wasn't in a position where um, we we couldn't make it financially. Yeah, yeah we good. were we're scraping by like everybody else is. Yeah, but um, you know, for people that that don't have that ability, that's tough. I mean, oh, I, I went from making six figures to to nothing. Yeah. In a yeah. blink of an eye, so yeah. you know it's we were just lucky we were were in a the financial position where we could, we could let me retire and mm -hmm. and cover our, our bills were paid and our house is paid for and the cars are paid for and right you know that kind of thing but um so we you know I was planning on retiring uh, in a few years, but this was. You know, this made it happen faster. And sure, force your hands. 
Yeah. yeah, well, I'm glad you made it through it. I mean, the, the, the it's like a, the, the stories we hear is like a country record, you know, they're losing your house and your car and your relationship. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's, that's, so that's what, what, yeah, yeah. You know, when this housing market crashes, we're going to see 2008 all over again. There's going to yeah. be empty neighborhoods. People are going to have to drag up and leave. Right, right. Because they're, they're house poor and car poor and insurance poor and, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, all these yep. people keeping up with the Joneses. My wife and I have lived in the same house we were married in. Mm-hmm. That's why we could retire. Do it. Yeah, yeah. We didn't yeah. keep up with yeah. the Joneses and buy bigger houses and you know all that boats and right that kind of thing. So right. So so message for anybody out there working: if you don't think it's going to happen to you, right, just think again. Cover your ass, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it all started for me when they didn't have, I didn't, I, I never had any symptoms. Mm-hmm. Never. Of a, of heart conditions. Yeah. And my doctor on a a, rand, a, a, a typical six-month checkup says, hey, have you ever had a CAC score done, a, a CAC score, yeah. calcium score? Mm-hmm. And I said no. And she said, well, let's just get one for the hell of it. So that was scheduled for a Friday. Yep. I go in there, and the guy says, the, the score you want from a calcium score, I don't know if you've ever had one done. No. It's a, it's a scan of your heart, basically. Mm-hmm. It's a CT scan, and what they're looking for is blockage. And okay. They, they come out with a score, and, and the, you want it as close to zero as possible. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for calcium deposits in your arteries. And... Anything over 400 is major bad. Well, mine came back at 29.80. What? And the dude is like, I need to talk to you in my office. He's giving everybody else out there stuff, and they're just leaving. He says, I need to talk to you in my office. And I go in there, and he's like, look, you have the highest calcium score I've ever personally recorded. Oh, wonderful! It's not what you want to hear. He said, "No," and I mean, we, I'm, I've got no symptoms. Never had any chest pain, arm pain, shortness of breath, none of that. Huh? He says, "How do you feel?" I said, "I feel fine." He said, "Well, if you were my daddy, I wouldn't let you leave this hospital." He says, "I've already made the appointment. They're waiting for you in the cath lab." Now, when wow. is anybody in a hospital waiting on you? Wow. He said, this is no joke. He says, you are as close to death as you've ever been in your life. Oh, my God, Doug. So I go to the cath lab. I go in five minutes in. He's like, I can't do anything for you. You're 80 to 90% blocked in three arteries. And I'm like, well, what's next? He said, open heart surgery, bypass. He says, it'll happen Monday or Tuesday. I said, well okay. He says, but you're going to a hospital room right now. He says, if you leave here and you have a heart attack, you're dead. You're, they're not going to save you. So what day was this on? Was this on a Friday? This this was a Friday. What a way to end the week. Yeah. The next Tuesday they do the surgery and the cardiologist or the surgeon gets in there, looks behind the heart and the two behind the heart are 90% blocked. So it was five. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't know how you're walking or talking. He said, you should have been dead a long time ago. He said, just, it's beyond me. I can't figure it out. He said, but we fixed it. So that's so what, have, it, what it started, Mel. So you have some, <clears throat> like, some new plumbing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that was that was uh, three and a half years ago, I guess. Something that's like that. that's an incredible story. You're, God bless and, you. Uh, You're lucky to be alive. Well, yeah. I mean, at the, at the time, I weighed about 355 pounds. Right. Since since then, I've been doing a carnivore diet. Have you ever heard of that? No. All meat. Meat, eggs, and fat, butter. Is that different that's than the I Atkins? Eat. It's yeah, it's somewhat different. Atkins is kind of like what they call keto. Okay. Where you eat meat and, and fat and low carb vegetables like cabbage and Brussels mm-hmm. sprouts and mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, but with 
carnivore, you eat nothing but animal products. Mm -hmm. We we eat keto for three years, and it helped Mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, when I had my heart surgery, I was on 12 pharmaceutical medications. Mm -hmm. Since the heart surgery, we did keto for almost three years, and we've been carnivore now for about six months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I take no medication now. Zero. I'm off of all of it. None. No heart medication, nothing. And uh, I've lost lost 95 pounds. Wow. Who suggested it? Or did you just, is this self-diagnosis? Just research. I mean, when I I, I was in a hospital, I started looking at different things. I started finding all these doctors and heart surgeons and neurologists and all these doctors on YouTube talking about keto, low-carb, high-fat, high-protein. Yep. So I had been all uh, whole food plant based vegan for three years before my heart surgery. Right. And I lost weight, but I never came off a single medication. So it was time to move on. Time yep. to figure something else out. So and of course in the hospital they're feeding a di- I was diabetic. Mm-hmm. In the hospital they're feeding me carbs. They're feeding me rice and beans, which are carbohydrates, and immediately yep. turn to sugar. Yep. They're feeding me fruit. Yep. And I'm a diabetic. And then they're coming and telling me, oh, your blood sugar is 180. We may have to put you on insulin. Yeah, I said, it's shit. the shit you're feeding me. Yeah. Yeah. I said, you come near me with an insulin syringe, and I said, heart <laughs> surgery or not, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> so when I'm out of here, I'm done with this bullshit. So when I yeah. came home... Yeah. We did carnivore then as a elimination diet yep. because nothing about meat or eggs or butter is inflammatory. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we did that for 30 days, and then we started adding in a few, you know, low-carb vegetables, and we figured out what we could eat that didn't affect us, make okay. us feel bad, pain, that kind of thing. Right. And that's where we went from there. So, so you know, I, I have a question. I'm no longer you. diabetic. Okay. No longer diabetic, yeah. um, but uh, just my my quick question, if I could, if somebody's listening to this out there and they're thinking that they want to do this, did you consult your physician or just just have that? Oh no, hell no! They're not going to want you to do that because they don't make money when you're not taking their drugs. Okay, right. So you you need physicians, to right, proceed at Physicians own. are nothing but dr- drug pushers. Yep. Yep. That's what their job is, is to sell pharmaceutical dope. Mm-hmm. And cool. I, don't know, I don't know if you know what your labs need to be, your blood labs. I just had them done actually uh, two days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for somebody like me who eats nothing but red meat, butter, and eggs, okay, my A1C is 5.2. Solid, right? My, my HDL is 60. My my triglycerides are 60, yep. which is the perfect ratio. My LDL is 105, mm-hmm. which doesn't matter because my triglycerides and my, my HDL are 60 and 60. So mm-hmm. LDL does not make a difference at that point. But either way, it's where it needs to be. My blood, blood glucose is 102. My blood pressure is averages 119 over 72. That's good. And the damn cardiologist is still trying to push a statin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure. like, you know, I said, Doc, I read studies too. And the studies show that statins are 1.2% better than not taking anything. Yeah. But That's why. the statins cause diabetes. They cause you to, it strips you of testosterone. It causes brain function problems. Mm-hmm. It causes muscle and bone aches because mm-hmm. it, your muscles deteriorate and you piss and brown because you're pissing your muscles out. Yep. I said, all of that, it causes ED. It causes you to, stri- it strips you of, of CoQ10. That's why you tell us to take it because of the shit you're giving us is stripping it away. I said, you're telling me that that's all worth 1.2% over taking nothing. Mm-hmm. I said, you are causing harm to your patients willfully. Good for you. 
They don't like hearing that shit. They probably don't like having you come in, right? No, they don't. You know, and, and I've told the, the, the one that that tried to, to get me to take the statin and yeah. do a vegan diet on top of that. Yep. I just fired him. I yeah. just fired him and I went back to the, the guy who's the AFib. So the only problem I ever have is if I get a chest infection, I'll have AFib. Okay. And they'll give me Eliquis and amiodarone to get me back in rhythm and to make sure I don't have any blood clots. Yeah. But that's yep. the only issue. And that, it's happened maybe three times since I had heart surgery. Okay. And, of well, course, they want me to take that crap all the time. I said, I'm not taking it all the time. I don't right. have AFib all the time. And they right. said, well, how do you know? I said, well, I've got a, a Cardia Mobile that gives me a six-lead EKG anytime I want it. Mm-hmm. And I also wear an Apple Watch Ultra that will alert me if I go into AFib. Good. So it watches all my sleep patterns. It watches my O2. It tells me all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, Doc, I'm not like your other patients. He said, no, you're nothing like my other patients. I said, no, they come in it. here wanting a pill that allows them to eat whatever shit they want to eat mm-hmm. instead of fixing their health themselves. Man, you've got a good message. Good message. The problem Listen, is, what, one thing before I are, forget, what was the highest day one C that you had before you dropped it into the fives? Thirteen point one. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And for years they had me on metformin. Okay. And hmm. and metformin didn't. It got it down to about seven point one. Never anything lower than that. Yep. So after my heart surgery, I started taking something called berberine, which is a uh, supplement. Mm-hmm. But it does the same thing that metformin does without the problems of metformin, which can cause brain fog and yep. all kinds of other shit. Todd, are you, so I started are, taking, you, are you blending in any exercise with this or any other lifestyle changes that are impacting these results, or is it just the the the, the diet? Just the diet. Because of my neck and my back, it, it's very difficult for me to do any any weight training or anything like that without injuring myself. Can you walk? I can, but not far. Okay. And it's just, it, it's really difficult. And, and most days, what I use for, uh, for pain is something called RSO. Hmm. You ever heard of that? Rick no. Simpson oil? No. no. It's a it's a THC oil basically. Okay. Like like CBD oil. Yep. But it's THC. Right. But it's THC. And uh, so I uh, um, I only take drops of this stuff, and all I all I get from it is pain relief. I don't get any stoned feeling or munchies right. or any of that garbage. Right. So it's I a, tried I, all that. You've tried it. How how do you uh, access well, it? Is it, is it? Is it is it like? Do you have a card for it, or is it? Uh, yeah, you uh, you got to get a card, or if you have somebody that that has a card, they can get it for you. But right, it's 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 All medical right, so. marijuana, basically. Okay, okay. But right. um, there's different kinds. I mean, it, I have a friend who was able to get it for me, and mm-hmm. it just so happened that the the second or third one we tried was the ticket. I mean, I. I used to be, I, because I was diabetic for so long, I've got neuropathy in my lower legs. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I quit the metformin, it was bad. I'm talking about, it felt like my feet were in buckets of charcoal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah. one drop of this RSO killed it. I know there's a lot of people out there that struggle with pain uh, and are probably not Oh, absolutely. Nervous. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I was on I was on sixty milligrams of hydrocodone for twelve years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Worked, drove like normal for twelve mm-hmm. years. Taking a five milligram pill every half hour through the day. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's it's I refuse to take drugs now. I'm I'm not gonna take a drug for treating symptoms. Yep. If you're not going to fix the problem, get out of my face. Because those right. drugs 
lead to more symptoms, which they give you more drugs for, drugs. and you end up with a bag full of shit. Oh, my gosh. We talked to some people that, you know, are either going through or on the insurance side, and, you know, this list of medications, 12, 15 medications. I'm like, it's, I just, how do you function? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, and, and psych drugs are the worst because yeah. even though there's studies, recent studies have come out and said that none of these psych drugs work. But Placebo. in the yeah in 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 the past, and I know a couple of people personally who they would give you a psych drug, and then within a year they would not have any more relief. Mm -hmm. But they can't take you off of that psych drug mm -hmm. because it's it's modified your brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep taking that. But they'll add another one to that. Mm -hmm. And then when that one slows down, they add another one to that. I know people taking five or six psych drugs. Stacking them. Yeah. I mean, my doctor put me on, uh, what the hell is the worst one? Um, I can't remember, but he put, it on, he put me on it because I was working 80 hours a week and stressed out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell me that uh, it's hard to get off this stuff mm -hmm. or impossible to get off of it. Well... I did get off of it. It took me six months. Yeah. And he told me, he says, you won't be able to get off this stuff. I said, you don't understand who you're talking to, you slick. <laughs> I'm not your normal said, guy. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't teach me can't at Paris Island. Yeah, yeah. They taught me do it, <clears throat> yeah. whatever it takes. So I, I crawled out of that pharmaceutical jail mm -hmm. after my heart attack. Mm-hmm. And... And the weight and all of that. I mean, I I just, you know, and I, and I tell the doctor every time I go in there, look, dude, if you can't give me something to fix the problem, don't waste my time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. And, and you can't tell me that my diet is not fixing the problem because you can't find a bad lab result. Yeah. Except for they'll they'll come back and tell you, well, the new studies show that you should you need your LDL below fifty. Fifty. I'm like, and who's 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 funding these research? Mm -hmm. This research. Where you I guarantee you, from? it's the statin companies. Mm -hmm. The statin companies are funding that crap. But you can go off, and I, and I said, I'll show you a study right here on my iPad that shows that people with low LDL, that low, it increases your all-cause morbidity by two or three times because you have low low cholesterol, low LDL, which they say is the bad LDL. Yeah. Well, what, what causes the plaque is the sugar and carbohydrates that you're eating scores the inside of the arteries and causes damage, and the LDL goes there to cover it like a Band-Aid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what you got to do is stop eating the sugar and carbohydrates. That's the problem. It's not the LDL. LDL is made in our bodies every day. It, it, it's it, part it, of our process. We are what we eat. Back to that, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Listen, I, I want to be respectful of your time, and I'm also being advised that I'm late for a meeting. Um, no problem, dude. So, but listen, I... Um, this has been wonderful. I should have you come out and I'd love to interview you or talk to you again. Uh, this is great information. So I, I appreciate you. I appreciate your message. Um, well, thanks and, a lot, brother. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, no good thing, and we'll be in touch with you. All right? All right, man. Thanks a lot. Okay, keep on.